Hello everybody, it's Ian here once again from OUFC Fan View, and welcome to part two of this review of Oxford United's promotion winning season of 2023-2024. We continue to look back at the highs, the lows, the anger and the joy from Liam Manning to Des Buckingham. In part one, we went from pre-season up until the end of November. Manning had just buggered off to Bristol City and Buckingham had only just started his role as head coach. If you haven't checked that video out, then I suggest you go back and have a look. The three games that we had against Bolton are where each chapter comes to an end. So to reference this back to the original Star Wars trilogy, then this entry will be like The Empire Strikes Back. I have no idea who the Empire would be in this story, but you kind of get my point. Things went a bit off the rails for our heroes in yellow. And just like the first video, these videos are very long and they take a lot of work to put together. So I really do appreciate anybody taking the time to view them. And I do put timestamps down below and hopefully that makes them a little easier to digest. Digest. If you can hit the like button though, that really does help. And if you can share the video out on social media or recommend it to any friends that you think might enjoy it, I'd appreciate that as well. And finally, if you do like my content, then consider subscribing. I do go off on a few tangents towards the end of this video as well, which I think kind of makes sense. You can judge for yourselves when we get there, but strap yourselves in as this is going to be a bumpy ride. Scarlett is going to read each game out just like she did last time, and let's see if she can do a better job of pronouncing FA Cup. Take it away, Scarlett, as we dive into December. FA Cup, Round 2, 2nd of December 2023, Oxford United 2, Grimsby Town 0. Job done for the Yellows, but this was very much like the first round game versus Maidenhead. Oxford laboured against the Mariners from League 2, but got the job done. It was the first win for Des Buckingham, and I don't think many people would have had Marcus McGuane down as the first goal scorer in the Buckingham era. But he got a goal in the first half, Marcus Brown came on and then got injured again. You can't make these things up sometimes. And finally, United put the game to bed with a Billy Bowden goal. Quick side note on Bowden, who we know has left now in the summer, but always seemed to go a bit under the radar during his time at Oxford United, but seemed to pop up with a lot of important goals. And I hope he's always remembered as an important member of this squad. But Oxford got through to round three and their reward was a trip to Coventry. I'm sure that'll be fine. EFL Trophy. Last 32, 5th of December 2023. Forest Green Rovers nil. Oxford United won. It would be remiss of me not to remind you Oxford United fans once again that we will not be in this competition next season. <laughs> Because away at Forest Green, with about 400 people, probably less than that, in attendance, kind of sums up how much people really care about this competition. No one's probably even going to remember this game as it was played with all the enthusiasm of a behind-closed-door reserve game. And just like the FA Cup a few days ago, Oxford just about did enough to win. It was Tyler Goodrum who found the winner in the second half, and it was actually a very good goal, and Oxford progressed to the next round. Sky Bet League One, Game 19, 9th of December 2023, Peterborough United 3, Oxford United 0. Back to League One action for the U's, but not in a good way because this game was a bit of a disaster and it already had some fans asking questions about the new gaffer. The injuries were mounting for the Yellows and this game always looked to be a tough task. Posh ripped Oxford apart with their attacking firepower and they seemed to possess everything going forward that Oxford lacked. James Beadle was superb in goal, as without him, the scoreline could have been much worse. Oxford were better, to be fair to them, in the second half. However, you always felt Peterborough had levels to go up if they needed to. Quite rightly, fans were annoyed after this one, and some fans even criticised Des Buckingham for his antics on the sidelines, for having his hands in his pockets and I don't really understand that one at all. Buckingham, to be fair, didn't sugarcoat this loss at all and talked about how he needed to put his stamp on things. Oxford always seemed to struggle away at London Road, but I don't worry because I'm sure next time we go there, it'll be all right. Sky Bet League One, game 20, 12th of December 2023, Reading 1, Oxford United 1. 
This was the first Thames Valley derby for over 20 years. And from an Oxford point of view, yeah, it was okay. Oxford took the lead midway through the first half through Kieran Brown. It was actually a really good team goal, a nice move put together. But the lead only lasted two minutes as ex-Oxford United striker Sam Smith, who has been a thorn in our side in the past and was a thorn in our side again here, made it 1-1. After the tennis ball protest from the Reading fans, the Royals were much the better side towards the end of this first half and easily could have gone in with a 2-1 lead. Oxford pretty much dominated the second half, but didn't really look like scoring. I took it as a bit of a positive step because it was a decent performance, but there were still a lot of Oxford fans left frustrated. Sky Bet League 1, Game 21. 16th of December 2023, Oxford United 3, Burton Albion 0. United entered into a weird bit of form here where it's kind of went win a game, lose a game for a while now. Um, but this one was a, the first win for Des Buckingham and it was needed by everybody at Oxford United. Fans, players and Buckingham himself needed a convincing performance and needed a convincing win and that is what they got against Burton. Burton were probably the perfect side to play because they were not very good. Oxford scored three beautiful goals, two by Ruben Rodriguez and one for Marcus McGuane. Where's this goal scoring form come from from Marcus McGuane? And maybe Buckingham is going to be like the McGuane whisperer in terms of getting him to get forward and score a few more goals, which is an encouraging sight and something that I think has been missing from McGuane's game for a long time. But this did still feel a bit like a Liam Manning victory with the way Oxford played, but it was encouraging and Oxford needed more of it. Sky Bet League 1 Game 22, 23rd of December 2023, Northampton Town 2, Oxford United 1. But we didn't get more of it as it was one step forward, one step back for United as they came up against a cobbler's side who were in good form. Oxford once again on the road in front of a packed away end left them nothing but angry. Northampton ended up getting the win in pretty much a tight game, but Murphy should have put Oxford 1-0 up in the first half, but he spurned the chance. So 0-0 at half time, and worryingly, Murphy went off injured as well. But things got worse for United in the second half, as Northampton scored a, a goal pretty early on. Oxford got a lifeline through a Cameron Brannigan penalty. Of course, he tucks it away. He always tucks his penalties away. There was very little in the game from that point on, but I thought Northampton just showed that little bit more desire to win this game, as Oxford just looked tired and they dropped deeper and deeper the longer the game went on. The Cobblers were a threat from crosses all the way through the game really and it was one final ball in the box which won it for Northampton and annoyingly for Oxford it was in the 95th minute. Virtually the last kick of the game is not how you wanted to celebrate Christmas. Sky Bet League 1, Game 23, 26th of December 2023, Oxford United 2, Cambridge United won. A near full house on Boxing Day and Oxford needed a response after that Northampton game. But Cambridge had been in resurgent form under their new manager, Neil Harris, and they took the game to Oxford in the first half and pretty much dominated it. They went in with a 1-0 lead and they thoroughly deserved that lead as well. I was already fearing what my comment section would look like if Oxford failed to win this game. But be fair to Oxford, the men in yellow not the Cambridge yellow, the Oxford yellow. They rallied well in the second half. They needed some much needed magic. And for the second season in a row, Tyler Goodrum scored a cracker against Cambridge. Oxford were pushing for a winner, but it didn't look like it was going to happen. And whilst there was last minute heartbreak against Northampton, there was last minute joy for Oxford this time. The pressure told as a Brannigan long range shot was too hot to handle for ex Oxford keeper Jack Stevens. And Kieran Brown was quickest to follow up to bundle it home. This felt fantastic, especially after that defeat to Northampton. Sky Bet League 1, Game 24, 29th of December 2023. Oxford United 2, Derby County 3. And now I suppose we have to talk about this game. A game I wanted to erase from my memory because this was a crushing defeat and a crushing way for Oxford to end 2023. Uh, a promotion chasing clash with Derby County where Oxford got off to an absolute flyer with a penalty and a belting free kick 
both from Cam Brannigan. Well, I mean, of course, the penalty from Cam Brannigan. And it meant that he had two, and Oxford had two, in the first 15 minutes of the game. This seemed amazing. And the Kassam Stadium was as close to bouncing as the Kassam Stadium does get. You never felt safe, and Derby County were in red-hot form, to be fair to them as well. And they got one back with virtually the last kick of the first half, or the last head, I should say, of the first half. And that really did feel like it was going to be a crucial goal. Full credit to the Rams for this amazing comeback as they laid siege to the Oxford goal for the entire second half. Really felt of a matter of when Derby were going to get their goals rather than if they would score their goals. This really felt like a cup game where Oxford were hanging on against a side from a higher division. And Derby's dominance grew as longer the second half went on and the inevitable breakthroughs came but they came late 81st and 86th minute goals it is worth pointing out that oxford had a lot of players missing for this game especially in attacking areas so the options for des buckingham were pretty limited and if you mix that in with the grueling schedule over christmas as well it just meant oxford looked really tired and really leggy at the end of this game and all in all just a horrible way for the year to end and you, you couldn't help but feel that promotion was slipping away. So we got to the end of December folks and let's go over the pros and cons like I've done for every month so far and there were still some pros. Uh, there was progress in the Cups again in the FA Cup and the EFL Trophy. Tyler Goodrum was showing some class um, back in the side and scoring some goals particularly in that game against Cambridge and we were still in a playoff place. We were still sixth in the league as the end of the year rolled round. The only place to start with the cons is injuries. Injuries and more injuries to the likes of Edwards, Brown, Murphy, Lee and Bowden all missing and all severely hamstringing Oxford's attacking options. Whenever we come up against promotion rivals, we seem to lose against them and we seem to be outclassed by them as well which is even more worrying and the defensive levels have just dropped overall as a team not just the back four and beadle it's the whole team we just look vulnerable especially from crosses and set pieces still no goals for mark harris it's, it's a horrible lean spell for sparky that he hasn't scored now since august People were really questioning Mark Harris's place in the side, but they were also pointing at the upcoming transfer window because Oxford's squad needed new blood. And there's no getting away from the fact that Buckingham had had a poor start as Oxford United boss. There was a couple of shocking losses in there already, and already people were starting to ask questions about the new gaffer. I must admit, at this point, he did feel like an inferior version of Liam Manning. That marked the end of 2023 and Oxford were still in a fight for promotion. They were still in the playoffs, but as I said a few moments ago, it did feel like that was slipping away. It just felt like the side was treading water, really, during this part of the season. And Buckingham, whilst he was struggling, he wasn't helped by the injuries, of course, but he also wasn't being helped with a lack of support staff that the club just did not seem to be able to sort out for him, particularly an assistant manager and an analyst. Like every other Oxford fan, I was looking forward to the January window opening and hopefully we would get a good transfer window like what we had in the summer that needed to address some holes in the squad, particularly up front. I do try to stay optimistic. Oxford United can test the limits of my optimism and that's putting it mildly at times. But I had a feeling that 2024 would work out just fine. Sky Bet League One, Game 25, 1st of January 2024, Charlton Athletic 1, Oxford United 2. Buckingham once again had to rally the troops after that crushing defeat that we had to Derby and he took his very depleted side to the Valley on New Year's Day. It was a change of system this time around using the wing backs and a late change of personnel as Jordan Thornley went down with a back spasm on the day of the game. This meant it was an unlikely role for Oshin Smith starting at centre-back and that proved to be an inspired choice. It was a sloppy start for Oxford though and the Addicts took the lead early on in this game but a fine team move saw 
get ready for this, Mark Harris score his first league goal in almost four months. It was relief as much as joy for Oxford fans to see Harris score. And Oxford controlled large periods of this game and controlled large periods of the second half, but just never really looked like getting that second goal. And it looked like this game was petering out until Oshin Smith, 30 yards out, no one around him just thought, I'm going to belt this one home. And it's exactly what he did. What an unbelievable strike this was and a great way to start 2024. Oxford started it with a rocket and a rocket of a goal. Seriously, look at this goal. How good is this bloody goal? It is crazy. FA Cup, round three, 6th of January 2024. Coventry City 6, Oxford United 2. This was supposed to be a fun day out, not a plum tie but a chance to see how United would do against an informed championship side. Instead, and for the second time this season, Oxford took a beating against a second tier side. Coventry scored some lovely goals in this game and the second half in particular was quite hard to watch as Oxford really struggled to get out of their half. Mark Harris at least scored again to make it 1-1, but that, that equaliser didn't last long. But there was little to cheer after that. To make matters worse, there was no James Beadle in goal amid rumours that he was going to be recalled by Brighton and then loaned out to Sheffield Wednesday. But the worst news came at the end of this game and that was that Stan Mills suffered a horrible injury and it was a season-ending injury for Mills too. This was really unfortunate as he'd been impressive in the first half of the season and it was such a shame to see a young man get his season cut short. EFL Trophy, last 16, 9th of January 2024, AFC Wimbledon 2. Oxford United nil. Out of the FA Cup on the Saturday and Oxford limped out of the Bristol Streets Motors Trophy a few days later. And they really played like a side that didn't want to be there or to progress. It was actually a decent lineup, but there were still no new signings in the building at this point, And things just felt a little bit stale. The only talking point came at the end of the game where Simon Eastwood was sent off. And it meant Oshin Smith ended up going in goal. And that was probably the only thing anyone's going to remember from this one. That ended Oxford's Cup involvement for the season. So it was goodbye for now to the EFL Trophy. Because in case you don't remember, Oxford won't be in this competition next season. There was some transfer activity to talk about before the next game, but unfortunately there was just as many going outs as there were coming in. Let's talk about the outs first. James Beadle had played his last game for Oxford United and he ended up going back to Brighton and then being loaned out to Sheffield Wednesday. We all expected it, but it was still disappointing. Stan Mills is another loanee who had to have his loan terminated because of that injury, and he returned to Everton. Kyle Edwards, another loanee, injured, returned to Ipswich, then he was released by Ipswich, and then he was signed again by Oxford to do rehab. At the moment, he's still at Oxford doing rehab, so he kind of remains in a bit of a limbo state. We don't really know what's going on. Alex Gorin left Oxford United for Forest Green Rovers. It was nice to see Gorin play a couple of times again this season before he did leave. Gorin had been a key member of the Oxford United team during Carl Robinson's time at the club, but some really horrible injuries have really hampered his career over the last couple of years, and it was quite clear that he couldn't play really in League One anymore. Oh, also Sonny Perkins went back to Leeds. Actually, this happened the week before, but nobody noticed or cared. But there were a couple of ins. Jamie Cummin came in to fill Beadle's shoes, signing on loan from Chelsea. A more experienced goalkeeper than Beadle who had done well at League One level in the past. And Tyler Bure signed in from Odense. Bure had been at Millwall before and hopefully he will provide some much needed pace and creativity going forward. Sky Bet League One, Game 26, 13th of January 2024. Carlisle United 1, Oxford United 3. No, no, cut it, cut it! I'm gonna get copyright stricken, I can't have that song. But what you heard there was Tom Petty's Love is a Long Road. But I have to just say, is it any longer than going to Carlisle? I doubt it. It's bloody miles. I went to this game, so I know how far Carlisle is. It's always been an away trip that's been on my bucket list and now I live in Sheffield, I live closer to Carlisle than I ever have done before. But I will reiterate, 
It's still bloody miles. I even took my wife on this journey, who's not a football fan, and it's fair to say she didn't enjoy the Brunton Park experience as much as I did. But we are still married. But enough about me, let's get back to the game. In Oxford were buoyed by those couple of signings that they made, and over 500 fans, including yours truly, took that long road to cheer them on. It was a nothing -y game for the first 30 minutes, and there were definite murmurs of discontent at how slow and predictable Oxford's football was. But then, out of absolutely nothing, Oxford got a goal from a corner. And do you know who scored it? It was Mark Harris scoring again. This guy is on fire. and the, He's like a new man in 2024. Swaxford took a 1-0 lead into half-time, but they did get a goal early in the second half, which really kicked the stuffing out of the Cumbrians. But this goal was clearly offside. So got a huge slice of luck. And that was the second goal for Mark Harris as well, who I have to just say again, looks a new man in 2024. Tyler Goodrum celebrated his new contract with a trademark Tyler Goodrum goal. And Jamie Cumming had a fine debut between the sticks and made a wonderful save towards the end of this game. All in all, after the first 30 minutes, this was a very professional away win for the U's. It was 10 days until Oxford's next game and the Yellows got their biggest signing of the window completed. Big as in he's very tall and big as in they played 400 grand for Cheltenham's Will Goodwin. But we certainly did need a striker so it was encouraging to see a striker come in but it did seem like a lot of money to pay for a player that's relatively unproven. <laughs> And he's also injured. Are you fucking kidding me? He's injured? I cannot believe that. You can't make these things up. Seriously, he's injured. So we won't even get to see him in the next few league games. But all in all, Oxford fans were happy with this signing. We finally had our big willy. Skybet League One, game 27, 23rd of January 2024, Oxford United nil, Barnsley one. A battle against a promotion rival played in extreme weather conditions where both sides would really need to fight and scrap to get anything out of the game. Well, Barnsley did, and credit to them for getting a goal and defending stoutly, but Oxford lacked the urgency in the second half when they were chasing the game. This game, the excuses for this game will all be put down to the weather, but Oxford had the whole second half with the wind at their back and they just put in a very tepid performance until the final 10 minutes, where suddenly they showed some urgency. Brannigan did rattle the bar from distance, but it was another loss at home. And to make matters worse, there were more injuries as well. First to Sam Long, who scored the own goal, which separated the sides, and then to Joe Bennett. Very disappointing and really damaging defeat as well. Once again, Oxford just didn't seem strong enough when they came up against one of the best sides in League One. Sky Bet League One, Game 28, 28th of January 2024. Bristol Rovers 3, Oxford United 1. And things went from bad to worse, really. Well, look, we don't have a good record at the Memorial Ground, but Bristol Rovers were in horrific form going into this one. Oxford players should have been chomping at the bit to get on the field and get a victory after that Barnsley game. but. Sometimes Oxford United performances leave you lost for words and in this first half that was one of them because United were dreadful. The worst thing about it is Oxford just looked like they couldn't be asked. There was no desire, no skill, no flair and they deserved to be 2-0 down at the break. Des Buckingham changed it and there was a change of formation at half time and you did see an improvement. At least Oxford gave it a bit of a go. Tyler Burray came on and looked pretty useful and Mark Harris scored again. It was another dodgy goal <laughs> because it looked like he just punched it into the back of the net. But hey ho, they all count. But there was no comeback though and Rovers got a third goal and all in all thoroughly deserved to win this game. Jamie Cumming had a horror show in goal and it became a bit of a tale of two goalkeepers really because the pirate stopper Jed Ward made a string of fine saves in the second half. Two defeats in a row for the first time this season and this was a bit of a shocker and it just heaped more pressure on Buckingham's tactics and his managerial experience. Skybet League One, game 29, 30th of January 2024, Oxford United 2, 
Portsmouth 2. After back-to-back defeats, the league leaders rode into town, but thankfully the U's had more fight about them than what we'd seen in the previous two games. Tyler Goodrum did what Tyler Goodrum does and scored a wonder goal in the first half to give Oxford a lead. There wasn't much to separate the sides really other than that Goodrum goal in the first half, but injuries once again spat in Des Buckingham's face. Finn Stevens came off in the first half and then at half-time goalkeeper Jamie Cumming was replaced by Simon Eastwood. The game was still pretty even in the second half but then Portsmouth just were, seemed to allow to score two very soft goals. The first one was a real joke for me as Oxford just seemed to stop and particularly Eastwood he just seemed to stand there and allow Colby Bishop to just kick the ball into the back of the net instead of picking the ball up. And it looked like Oxford were heading for a third straight loss and they needed a hero and up stepped James Henry who nodded in from close range after the Portsmouth goalkeeper could only palm the ball from a Mark Harris shot. But Henry did well to tap it in and it rescued a point for United which they deserved overall and it did feel like a bit of a win that draw getting the late goal. But when you look back at the game this did still feel like two points dropped and it did still feel like a game where Oxford should have won it. So we reached the end of January and let's go over the pros and cons again. So not too many pros, but the return to form of Mark Harris is certainly one of them. Great to see Sparky in amongst the goals and that would continue for the rest of the season. There were two fine away wins in here as well. The wins over Carlisle and Charlton were very good. And there were the promising signings, particularly of Will Goodwin. But the cons are starting to ramp up, aren't they? And let's start with those Barnsley and Bristol Rovers games. Not only were they defeats, but they were shocking performances as well. United were dumped out of both cup competitions in January too. Clean sheets just seem to be a thing of the past. We look very leaky and always need to score more than a goal to win a game. But then again, let's go back to the unluckiness of injuries, injuries and more injuries. Cumming, Bennett, Long, Stevens, Brown, Edwards, Bowden, Murray. Murphy, a huge long injury list is not helping Des Buckingham's case. I was wrong to think this, but I remember looking at February as a pivotal month in this promotion push. There were a lot of games, but there looked like a lot of winnable games as well, and Buckingham was getting more attacking resources, we'll see in a second about some signings coming in, and I thought it was Oxford could show a real statement of intent to get back into the promotion race. It didn't go to plan, but let's have a look at it. It's time for February. So the transfer window slammed shut on February 1st and Oxford got two more bodies in the building. Owen Dale signed from Blackpool, a winger who had struggled to get in the Tangerine side this season. Dale's energy and enthusiasm made him pretty much a fan favourite straight away and he did become a very important piece in this promotion push. Jay Matete also signed on loan from Sunderland. This was one I was really excited about. Matete had been brilliant in the heart of midfield for Sunderland and Plymouth, winning promotion with both of them in the last two seasons. If he could come in and stay fit, he could make a massive difference to Oxford's midfield, providing so much more energy and bite in there than what we'd seen in previous months. But only if he could stay fit. If... And this happened a little bit later on in the month, but I'm throwing it in here because I'm doing all the transfer business here. And it was Gatlin O'Donker going on loan to Barnet. Gats desperately needed this. And I felt Oxford did no favours to O'Donker by keeping him around the first team this season and giving him very little game time. It was clear that he was struggling and some fans were giving him really unfair abuse. I mean... He's 19 for goodness sake, but it just seemed like his game wasn't progressing and he was crying out for first team football. Barnett gave him that opportunity and that loan worked out fantastically well for Odonka and he certainly got his mojo back. Sky Bet League 1, Game 30, 3rd of February 2024. Oxford United won, Reading won. February started with the first of many draws and the first of many lacklustre home performances where Oxford threw away many a lead. This was also the second instalment of the Thames Valley Derby and the Royals came in fine number and fine voice. Unfortunately, 
the game didn't really live up to the build-up. Oxford had their new signings on the bench in Dale and Matete, and things were heading United's way, and it looked like we were going to get a scrappy home win. Mark Harris continued his good form by tapping in a close-range effort in the first half, and Reading weren't really in the game at all. They were really offering nothing going forward, but Oxford, again, lacked that urgency and intent to kill this game off out of nowhere. And get ready to hear this a lot, kids. Oxford made a mistake at the back. Reading broke and Kieran Brown scored an own goal. So out of absolutely nothing, we threw this game away. Fans bemoaned the lack of killer instinct, as you would expect. And the second Thames Valley derby of the season ended all square. Sky Bet League One, Game 31. 10th of February 2024. Blackpool won. Oxford United won. Another draw, but of all the draws Oxford was to get this month, this was the best. The Tangerines were a fantastic side at home this season, and they took an early lead in this one as well. But Oxford hit back extremely quickly, and it was Mark Harris once again making it 7 from 9 in 2024. What a turnaround he has had. There's been a lot of question marks over Buckingham's impact on this Oxford United squad, but he's certainly given Sparky back his spark. And Oxford were a match for the Seasiders in this game, and they had more punch going forward. Josh Murphy and Billy Bowden returned from injury, and we saw new signing Will Goodwin play up front for the first time. Both sides could have nicked this game late. Jamie Cumming made an excellent save to keep Blackpool at bay. And then right at the end of the game, Billy Bowden got on the end of a superb Murphy cross. And somehow managed to head it against the post. It's one of those ones where it looked easier to score than miss. I still don't know how he didn't put it in. So it ended in a draw, but it was an encouraging draw. Sky Bet League One, game 32, 13th of February 2024, Oxford United 4, Wigan Athletic 2. But of course those draws are only good if you can back them up with wins, and those wins had been rare as hen's teeth, but Oxford found one but in true Oxford fashion, it was never easy. Wigan were actually the better side and should have gone in leading at half time. There were boos on the lips of the Oxford United fans, but they were spared by Josh Murphy, who scored his first league goal for Oxford United on the stroke of half time. A big scoreline in this game, but Oxford weren't really good and they were quite fortunate with the goals they scored. Brannigan got a heavily deflected effort in the second half to just trickle past the goalkeeper to make it 2 1. But there was a wonderful. Goodrum strike which hit the post but it did fall kindly to Ruben Rodriguez to make it 3-1. But Oxford couldn't kill the Latics off and they gave away another goal just a couple of minutes after making it 3-1 to set up a nervy finish. Thankfully the Yellows finally got over the line in injury time. Tyler Goodrum got the goal to finally make it safe at 4-2. It sounds like an amazing game this one. It really wasn't. Sky Bet League 1. Game 33. 17th of February 2024. Wickham Wanderers nil, Oxford United nil. Why do games against Wickham Wanderers always end up frustrating? They seem to be like our kryptonite. And in the first half, it was only Jamie Cumming who seemed to be immune to the shards of Krypton because he kept Oxford in this game. He made a string of fine saves in the first half. Not having Elliot Moore in the back line didn't help matters for Oxford either. And Buckingham was forced to go back to basics in the second half. And we saw a version of a 4-4-2, which was a sight for sore eyes, I've got to say that. A big man and a little man combo up front. It was like I was a young lad back at the manor in the 90s. It was refreshing to see, and you've got to give praise for Buckingham for doing this. And Oxford had chances to win this game in the second half and really should have been awarded a penalty. But alas, we never seemed to be able to beat the chair boys. And overall, a point was probably fair. Sky Bet League 1. Game 34, 20th of February 2024, Oxford United 2, Northampton Town 2. Another draw, folks, and this one was a tough pill to swallow. This was a game that Oxford controlled for large periods, but a couple of mistakes uh, in both halves made sure that they only came away with a point. But the Yellows got a dream start with Josh Murphy smashing home after five minutes. And as I said, Oxford were in control of this game. Northampton just sat back and let Oxford have the ball, but Oxford didn't really push hard enough to get that second goal and get that third goal. 
The Cobblers were ruthless at punishing Oxford's mistakes and with their pretty much only shot on goal in the first half scored and it went in 1-1. But Oxford controlled the second half again but without really peppering the Northampton goal. But United thought they had won it late when Will Goodwin scored his first goal for Oxford with a deft header from an Owen Dale cross. We never saw this Dale-Goodwin combo again this season so it's worth seeing the replay on this one. Once again, though, Oxford couldn't see this game out. And the Cobblers scored right at the end to get the draw. I felt very conflicted after this game because Oxford really did play quite well. But the mistakes were almost comical that gifted Northampton's goals. The second goal in particular was almost like the Oxford players were frozen in time. And they just allowed for the ball to be walked in. The fans were furious after this game because this was another game where Oxford threw away points and Des Buckingham was taking the flak once again. Sky Bet League 1, Game 35, 24th of February 2024, Oxford United 1, Leighton Orient 2. Despite all the draws, Oxford are actually unbeaten so far in the month of February. It wasn't a very impressive run, but boy, the club were quick to tell you about it. But they had the chance to end the month with a win against Leighton Orient. Ideally, United needed a win and a good performance, but they got neither. But guess what? Oxford took the lead again, this time through Tyler Goodrum. Was it Goodrum's goal or was it an OG? Well, it got given to Goodrum, so let's say it was his goal. And like most games in this month, and a lot of games throughout this season. Oxford were decent in the first half, but like so many other games, they only took a slender lead into half time, and they really, once again, did not show that intent to kill the game off. You could just tell amongst Oxford United fans, there was a sense of here we go again, because you knew Oxford were never comfortable with this one nil lead, and you knew that the O's were gonna come out and give it a real go in the second half. And you've got to give Leighton Orient credit, because they played with all the effort and all the energy, and they played like a side that wanted to win this game, and they thoroughly deserved their comeback. Oxford's defending was weak and lackluster, and this left a lot of the fans very jaded and very dejected. Even myself got a bit dramatic and I labelled this game the day the music died. I really felt like this was the end of the promotion push, if you like. It just felt like Oxford was sliding out of the playoff mix. We were going to finish more like mid-table and this was the game that really put the nail in the coffin for me. I, I jumped the gun a little bit on this because things were obviously going to get a bit worse, but this really kicked the stuffing out of me and it was a terrible way to end the month. Defeat here also brought to an end that unbeaten run that the club was harping on about. As I said, it wasn't a very impressive run. It was about as impressive as this game. So a very disappointing month overall, but let's run over the pros and cons, because there are some pros to talk about, and Mark Harris deserves the praise. He's continued to score goals in 2024 and looks a very much rejuvenated player, and it is great to see. Josh Murphy was starting to look like a player that could make a real difference, and more than anything, he was starting to score goals and to make assists. And just to highlight one result and one performance, the draw with Blackpool, although it was only a draw, was a decent performance and score. And if Oxford played more like that more regularly, then we would get more joy. But the cons, and my goodness, the cons feel so much worse than the pros because more than anything else, Oxford was seventh in the table and it started to look like we were sliding towards the middle of the pack rather than challenging for promotion. Turgid performances and turgid football, Oxford just passing the ball around amongst their back four, passing for passing sake, no movement in the forward line. It was very dull and frustrating to watch. Defending is shocking. The players look scared to make a tackle and it isn't just the defence and it isn't just Jamie Cumming because they've made their mistakes but it's defending as a team. Oxford just look weak, the midfield looks non-existent and it looks like keeping a clean sheet is just laughable at this stage. The new signings have come in, they haven't really made a massive impact there yet. It's probably a bit harsh this one because they haven't been given a lot of time. But the likes of Bure already looks like he's not getting going to get much game time. And we're just going to have to wait and see if they can improve this Oxford United lineup. So this is it folks, here we come to the crunch part of this video. This is not the whole of March but you know what happens halfway through this month. This is where Oxford United season hits rock bottom. There are a few little tangents I go off in this month as well, just around this video off, so I hope you do enjoy them. But let's have a look at it. Let's dive into this early part of March. <laughs> To 
the season headed into the spring, Oxford United felt like they were in the deepest depths of winter. The fans were not happy with what they were seeing on the pitch. Buckingham was not inspiring a lot of confidence either. And there was growing discontent off the pitch too. There was a lack of communication from the club's higher ups, particularly on issues such as the stadium. Fans also thought it was a bit fishy when out of the blue, Chris Williams, communications manager and much beloved figure, all of a sudden announced he was leaving. The Oxford mob were out with their pitchforks demanding answers and it called for director Grant Ferguson to come over to the UK to put these fires out. There was also a quickly cobbled together fans forum where Ferguson, Tim Williams and others got the chance to clear the air about off the field issues with the fans. And although results on the pitch were about to hit rock bottom, I think this fans forum did a good job of restoring some of the fans' faith with the club. There were a lot of Oxford fans that were just assuming that everything had gone off the rails and everything was, you know, the club was spiralling backwards and everything was out of control. My two pennies worth on these things and it's probably a bad time to uh, do this comment because of Oxford getting a suspended mm. transfer embargo this week, but ultimately it's about results. If Oxford were winning every week, then nobody would care about this lack of communication. Once results go south, everybody looks to find every scrap of negativity and blow it out of proportion. Personally, I don't need an update every day if there's no news to report. And generally, I don't take silence from the club as proof that people don't care or that they're not doing their job or there is a problem. Maybe that's just me and maybe that's just my picadillos and maybe Oxford just need to put out a tweet every hour saying all is calm, all is calm, all is calm. I don't even know why I'm throwing this bit in, but I'm throwing it in anyway. As I said, I'm going off on a tangent. I also don't get annoyed if players don't come over and clap the fans at the end of the game. If you play shit and you lose, I understand completely if you just want to get off the pitch and get out of there. It doesn't mean to me that you don't care or you don't appreciate the fans or you don't want to play for the club. People are weird and fans are weird and quite frankly you should all be a lot more like me. Anyway, that's the rant over. Let's get back to the football. Sky Bet League One. Game 36, 2nd of March 2024, Portsmouth 2, Oxford United 1. This game took place before the fans forum that I just ranted about and after the defeat to Leighton Orient. This trip to Fratton Park to face the league leaders felt like it could be a bit of a disaster, but don't worry everyone, that is to come. And after two minutes, those fears looked like they were going to be realised as Portsmouth took the lead. But rather than going into their shells, Oxford actually came out and showed a lot of fight in this game. Cameron Brannigan scored a penalty, of course he did. Oxford were level in the game and they were looking the much the better side for the majority of it. The youths were dangerous on the counter-attack and Murphy and Dale were exceptional. But the Achilles heel comes from Oxford just lacking that killer instinct. This was also Portsmouth year where their title win was built on nicking tight games and it was an Oxford attack which hit the corner flag and stayed in play and just made everyone stop for a second and from that Portsmouth launched a counter-attack and won the game. It was a crazy move really and a crazy passage of play and kind of summed up both side seasons at that point. But fans were conflicted after this game. If you didn't watch this game, you would have just seen the score, seen another defeat and been dejected. But if you did watch it, you'd have seen Oxford play with intent and they were genuinely unlucky in this game. This was arguably the best performance under Des Buckingham. And if Oxford played like this every week, then this is definitely a side you could get behind. Sky Bet League One, game 37, 9th of March, 2024. Oxford United 2, Cheltenham Town 1. This game took place after the fans forum that I ranted about a few moments ago and you could tell that there was a genuine attempt from Oxford United fans to rally their team and create some kind of an atmosphere in the void of space and time that is the Kassam Stadium. United got the win. That was paramount. But it was a performance that was more like the lacklustre ones we saw at the end of February than the, than the team that had taken the game to Pompey just a few days ago. Josh Murphy's red hot form continued and he gave Oxford a lead just before half time. But once again, Oxford came out in the second half and were passive. Cheltenham got a scruffy equaliser that we all saw coming. But to give the Yellows credit, they did rally very well once they got pegged back to 1 1. Why it took an equaliser to bring this out of the players, who knows? But better late than never. United found a late winner too after a wonderful cross from Owen Dayer was met by Greg Lee to score his first goal for a long time. It was a lot of relief for Oxford United fans and it was a precious three points. 
Okay, everybody, we've reached that point. You know what I'm talking about. This is going to be a long section with another rant in there as well. So if you do want to take a break and come back to it, it's fully understandable because United season was about to hit rock bottom. Sky Bet League One, Game 38, 12th of March 2024. Bolton Wanderers 5, Oxford United 0. Oh boy, where to start with this one? A lot has been said about what came after this game, but how bad was this game? Well, you can go and check out my raw feelings on it in the video that I made. And I think this is one of the worst Oxford United defeats I've ever seen. It was there when Oxford lost 7-0 to Wigan, and there was still some gallows humour in the stand. But there was no humour in this. This was live on Sky Sports 2, and this was nothing short of embarrassing. 5-0 actually flattered Oxford, who could barely get out of their half for the majority of the game. Bolton looked every bit promotion contenders, and Oxford's promotion push at this point seemed laughable. This was a brutal exposure of all Oxford's flaws, and Oxford fans were shell-shocked at the end of it. Of course they were angry, and Des Buckingham, not surprisingly, was bearing the brunt of the fans ire. So we're going to get into side tangent mode again here folks and first of all I'm just going to say I am crap at doing YouTube comments. It always takes me a while to get through them but I didn't even want to look at the comments for a long time after this game. In fact this game left me seriously questioning if I actually wanted to carry on doing YouTube videos and doing Oxford reviews. The Bolton fans to their credit for the majority, were very gracious in victory. But there was one comment that stuck with me. It was when Buckingham's body language was described as a lost little boy on the sidelines. I thought this was incredibly harsh and it cut deeper with me than the usual criticism. Because of all the criticism Buckingham was getting, the one I couldn't stand was his attitude on the sidelines. He has his hands in his pockets. He looks disinterested. He can't motivate the players. I just didn't understand this because every manager has different characteristics and there's no one size fits all for success. Klopp and Guardiola are very different to Ancelotti, but they're all successful. This argument seemed very redundant, especially if you look at the last two Oxford managers. Robinson at times was unhinged on the sidelines, a fantastic cheerleader when things are going well but almost like a deranged lunatic when it wasn't, and a lot of the fans didn't like that. Then you had Liam Manning, who tried to take all of the emotion out of the game to the point where it was a little bit too scripted. People got tired of this too, and Bristol City fans don't seem to like it either. So once again, whilst these things do come back to with Oxford United a win in, these problems aren't really a big deal. Maybe these attacks on Buckingham's pitch side demeanour are not because he is scared or lost or lacking in experience or skill. It simply came down to him not being himself. When Buckingham first came in, talked about being a stepfather when he came in, but I always thought substitute teacher fitted the mould more. I got the sense that Manning was very strict with the players to an almost militant level. I personally think he took things too far and was unnaturally controlling. So when Buckingham came in, and with Oxford second in the league, I feel he didn't want to change too much about what had been working. And this is me really speculating here, but I suspect Buckingham is probably a more easygoing guy than Liam Manning. And this led to the substitute teacher vibe coming in and that dip in standards. Buckingham tried to change things and we were left with a bastardised mix of styles of Buckingham ball and Manning ball. And it was clear that this was just not working. How we were playing football and the plan of how we were going to attack teams seemed very muddled and the football was just dull and very frustrating. I just want to say one more thing. Fans that were critical of Buckingham and fans that wanted him out. Now, personal attacks aside, you weren't necessarily wrong. Hindsight has proved you to be wrong and now we all love Des Buckingham, but at the time, criticism was justified. Again, personal abuse aside, but Buckingham was struggling and this side was sliding backwards. I was always hopeful he would turn it around, but I felt he would need a pre-season to do it and I was prepared to take this season as a write-off, even though that would be incredibly frustrating. So when you look back at things, don't think you were wrong for being critical or having doubts. Fans are always looking for a smoking gun and it's hard to curtail those knee-jerk reactions, but we all care deeply about Oxford United and that is where the criticism comes from. We're desperate for them to be successful. And one thing is for sure, I don't think anybody expected the turnaround that we got. Putting it mildly and stating the bloody obvious, 
This Bolton game had a massive impact on how the rest of the season unfolded. If United had lost that game 2-1, then I doubt much would have changed in Buckingham's approach. The scoreline and the manner of the defeat had to be as drastic as it was. It needed to expose everything that simply was not working and was not going to work. It had to light the beacons or scream from the rooftops that a change was needed. We didn't know it at the time, but what was left of Liam Manning's Oxford United died on that pitch in Bolton and a new Des Buckingham's Oxford United emerged. So with the Yellows promotion push frozen in Carbonite, how were the Oxford United Rebels going to get it back from Jabber's Palace? Well, that's where we're going to have to pick the story up in part three. And I hope you did enjoy part two of this video and please do not fret because I will be back to do the concluding part very soon. I will just say thank you very much again for watching it. I hope you did enjoy this little trip down memory lane of the darker part of the season. But I, I rest assured it will get much better in the concluding chapter. But once again, if you can hit like on the video, share it out to any friends or on social media and subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate all of those things. Thank you very much again for watching. Leave your comments down below and I will be back to do part three very soon.